All right, so this is just going to be a quick little video. A few people have been asking, and I just think it's something that's interesting on its own, and that is the cores of the composite parts. So this is the carbon fuselage that I've been building out for the past few months now. And um, yeah, it's just a lot lighter and way better than the previous aluminum versions. And with pretty much every composite part, there's a core. And so this is what is actually inside of the carbon part. And there's a lot of work that goes into making the core. Uh, there's actually, it, it, it takes a lot more work to just get this, this part done right here than it is to then get the carbon work done. So there's a lot of uh, underappreciated work, I guess, that happens with the core, because really without the core, the core is what makes everything work. So yeah, this is the core, and so I have a, I'm, I'm doing a big run of these, about 20 of them right now, and so before I start uh, getting them finished, I figure we'll just take a look at them. And so obviously wood core, this is machined, it's not sanded yet, so you can still see some of the machine marks in here and those will of course be sanded smoother before we get carbon on here and you can see it has everything needed so our stabilizer goes back here and our wing goes here and then our mast eventually comes comes up in through here so just to get to this part there's a it's a it's a big multi-step process so first the stock needs to get glued up and then the stock needs to be machined down to size and then we put the stock onto the CNC and then run the cut and then we end up with a blank here these two holes are completely passing through and then it's put upside down in a jig very precisely lined up to then bore out the holes for the inserts and then so these are the inserts right here the m6 so then the stainless inserts are then put in the location and then those are filled in with epoxy and so is these the two mast holes right here and those are a complete pass through because you obviously don't want a wood core exposed to wood so we can't just drill a hole through so we're drilling a hole through that solid epoxy and then there's enough room for the bolt head to be countersunk as we see in the finished piece here you have that nice countersunk so you get a nice flush fit so that's some of the work that goes in and then it's smoothed out and ready to go to be then finished with a whole bunch of carbon so that is it for the fuselage. And so there's a lot going on underneath there and a lot of precise lining up and machining in order to get them to work well and come out consistently. And then the same kind of goes for the base plates. And so I have a whole bunch here and I keep them taped up in stacks if I'm, going, if I'm not going to get to them for a few days because we don't want them warping at all. And sometimes with moisture, changes they can warp a bit so these are this is a stack of base plates and we'll pull one out and take a look at it and so we kind of have the same thing going on here it's a, a very big multi-step process in order to get our finished base plate right here so uh, the first thing is the edges are solid epoxy so these are first cut out and then poured um, and then so imagine maybe a 10 feet long uh, board of wood has maybe 10 or so of these cut out and then we come in with the epoxy and we pour this going all the way around the holes get poured and then these centers get poured as well so solid epoxy around all the through holes again we don't want wood core being exposed to water so any through hole solid epoxy all the way around it and then the same thing with the edge you know you can't really wrap carbon around a really tight edge it gets a little bit difficult so we just avoid that issue by having a solid uh, epoxy edge here and then 
that board is then run through and brought down to uh, thickness and that exposes the other side and so you can see I we just I just go with black because uh, the carbon is black we'll just keep the colors consistent it doesn't really matter but we go with black and you can see like if this was a kiteboard rail and you had that kind of bleed through that obviously wouldn't look that great but you're not going to see any of that because it all gets covered in carbon anyways so once this gets to this state it is then thrown back onto the machine and then all these holes are drilled out in one setup so this gets thrown onto a jig very you line up the tool where it should be to start and then you hit cut and it's going to drill out the 90 millimeters right at 90 millimeters and then also your two mast um, m8 bolt holes and so everything's lined up all in one cut and that's pretty important to have and so that's why that machine is also really great i remember doing this back by hand and it was um difficult to get perfect every time but the wonders of computers we can now get these absolutely perfect and spot on and so then we start getting a whole bunch of carbon on each side of this part and then the actual insert is then built up on top of this and then eventually you get the bottom side you get your holes drilled countersink everything and then you have a finished up part so there's a whole lot going on in, in com composite parts it was something that kind of mystified me back in the day but as things have gone on you kind of learn to figure it out and so the core components are exactly as they sound they're the core component they're very important they kind of hold everything together and oftentimes the work that goes into the core is a lot more than all the finish work I would say that maybe 80% of the work goes into getting these cores exactly how you want them to be and then that remainder that 20% is just getting the carbon work done the final sand the final finish and so real quick here before we go I'm kind of asking I guess for your guys's opinion on something I always wanted to build a sup a stand-up paddleboard the main thing keeping me from doing it was the cost of a blank is you can deal with the cost of the actual foam blank it's more so the shipping and the logistics of getting that foam blank to you uh, was often more expensive that would pretty much rule out the project so <clears throat> I did come up with a sup or kind of an idea and it worked out really great so you can see I have came up with a design and I was using foam I have already, so I believe this is split up into seven, seven separate sections. If I were to actually do it, it would only be four or five sections because I could order the, the proper size foam. But you get all these different sections and they're all machined out and you can glue them together very easily. And then once they're glued together, you then go through the final it, it basically is 95% of the way done once you get it glued together. You just kind of have to sand out the uh, mill marks. And then you have a sup blank. And I actually did this a few weeks ago, glassed it up, gave it a nice paint, and it's been great. It's a little 10 foot sup. Um, maybe a little bit small for me, but I can still paddle around and it's a lot of fun. So, this is just an idea that. I'm kind of thinking of and I think it might be pretty cool and if anyone is actually interested in that I'll order the foam and make them available uh, I don't really know so any sort of feedback would be would be awesome and so the benefit is all these pieces you can r put them together in one box and ship it with UPS normally uh, um, but you can get this in a normal box send it normally with UPS for like a normal regular price and that's the that's the benefit of it is you don't need a big truck pulling up and you don't need to pay several hundred dollars just to get the thing shipped you can just put it in a box send it via UPS um, and it's very easy to do it that way and so 
if if there is some interest, I'll definitely get going on it. And I also think so. I have the for the foil boards. I have the three eleven board. Yep, the three eleven peanut board. And any bigger than that is when that shipping size really starts to come into play. And I want to do a lot bigger uh, foil boards, like a four eleven and possibly a five eleven, and come up with some wing board designs because those are generally quite large so this type would with the sections and gluing it together i think is is a great way to go it's a little bit different and it's it's cool it, it it's it's pretty cool to put them together and then you shape out the board there's a whole process behind that um, but it's, it's pretty cool and it works out really well so if you find that interesting and you're interested specifically in the stand-up paddle boards, let me know and I can get on them. It takes a bit for foam to come in these days. It's about a month and a half lead time. So it would, it would take, take a while, but if that's of any interest, let me know.